Welcome to our Developing Web Apps series of tutorials. I'm Peter Thompson. The web browser receives the content as the HTML file. This HTML file contains the semantic structure, which is the elements that give meaning to the content and identify the types of content, and the text content of the web page. From this content, the browser creates the document object model. It looks at the header and requests any external files that might be needed, um, such as the JavaScript or the CSS. The requested JavaScript might modify HTML content, they might modify CSS, and it also receives notification of changes to the document structure. The browser runs these scripts and applies any changes to the content. The CSS is then applied to the content to give the style, and this is displayed in the view that we see in the browser window. JavaScript can be linked from the header as an external file and Hello World 2 JavaScript is this file in the second pane. JavaScript can also be included as a script within the head or at the end of the body of the document and we can also have JavaScript as part of an HTML element. Each function can be given a name. This is my world function. The external script we've called the function external world function. When this button is clicked, it calls the my world function. When button two is clicked, it calls the external world function. And button 3 also calls the external world function. When my world function is called, it isn't passing any parameters within the brackets. But when we call the external world function here, we're passing the value of this ID. So this takes the ID of the button and passes it to the script. And again, we do this with button 3. Now, the function here is to get the element by its ID, TT284. And that is this empty paragraph here, which has the ID TT284. And right into it, the value of Hello World. We can see that this button saying click me is the one that calls this function. So if we come over to the view of the code in the browser, we can click me here and immediately we see Hello World appearing. So this is in, within the paragraph TT284. If we click button 2, we call the external world function and pass it the ID of this button. The external function is going to get a different element by its ID, P2TT284, and it's going to write Hello World 2 as a heading 2, and it's going to add my ID to it. Now, my ID is the value that's received by the function, 
So that's going to be written. We saw here that it was going to be the value of this ID that was passed, and this is going to be button 2. So we're going to see Hello World 2 plus button 2 appearing. If we click 2. So there is the title, Hello World 2, and here is button 2, which is the value of the ID that was passed to the function. And again with button 3, we're passing the ID, we will get the my ID being written. So if we click button 3, it's rewritten Hello World 2 and now with button 3. Some important points to note when you're working with JavaScript. The characters used for quotes and inverted commas are not the same. If you use a word processor, you're likely to get this first character and it won't work. We need this second character and you need to use a proper code editor to do this. The opening inverted commas must be matched by the closing inverted commas. So if we look here, we can see that the uh, ID here has a matching pair of inverted commas. Sometimes we use a single inverted comma, sometimes a double inverted comma but you can't open with one and close with the other. The opening tag here must be matched by the closing inverted comma. A single inverted comma here matched by a single closing one. JavaScript uses different brackets for different purposes. Opening brackets will always be matched by closing brackets and they'll always need to be correctly nested. So here we see a pattern of brackets. Note the opening bracket and the closing bracket. An opening bracket and a closing bracket. A pair of opening and closing brackets with nothing between them. An opening bracket, a closing bracket or brace. So they're always in pairs, and they're always properly nested. Spelling of code words and variables must always be accurate. There's no room for error here. Always use the same. Here we're identifying the ID with lowercase characters. It must always be the same lowercase. Our external world function has a capital F. It must be matched by exactly the same spelling in the JavaScript here. So punctuation must always be 100% correct. There's no room for any error at all when writing computer code. If you do have an error, don't add any more code until you've solved that error. If you start adding errors to errors, it can become almost impossible to solve the error. Sometimes the web browser won't show you the error, but the developer tools will, and if you look at the JavaScript console, um, that will display the errors that you've got and the line number. If the code simply does nothing, there's an error somewhere. You need to locate it before you do anything else and correct it. So the developer tools can be very useful in identifying um, where an error is. 
The developer tools also allow you to step through your code line by line to see what's happening. So, as a general rule, when you're writing code, add one line, test it. Correct it if there's an error, test it again. Writing code is very slow, methodical, but it's the only way of writing code. You cannot write a lot of code and then try and debug it. Next, I'm going to paste in a little bit of co code and save it and refresh the page. I've added a button labeled test it that calls my function and the script for my function writes a message to the console log. Writing messages to the console log is a much better way of debugging a script and watching what it's doing than using alert messages. Now to view the console log I'm going to go to the tools the web developer and the web console. Now when I press the test it button I should see my message appear in the console log below. So there we are. So far so good. Now let's check what happens if we create an error in our script. So let's remove the bracket from here and save it and refresh it and immediately it tells me there's a missing bracket after the argument list on line 36 character 57. So this is all one row of data here. So it's line 36 character 57 missing bracket. Let us replace the bracket, save it, refresh, test, and it's working. See what happens if we miss out a single inverted comma. Save it, refresh it, unterminated literal string. So we've got the error reported straight away. Now as soon as you start adding more than one error it might detect multiple errors or it may simply do nothing. So we've missed out the termination of our script altogether. Save it, refresh it, test it and the function is not complete but it doesn't tell us exactly what's missing from the function so we need to complete the function save it test it refresh now what's gone wrong okay Unterminated little string, right. Let's put that back in. Save it. Refresh it. Test it. And we're back to our working script.